Shepard's Log. Stardate IR2.117.2. Project Shepard Base Alpha has been begun here on Terra Firma. Slowly but surely, I am gathering the resources I need to survive and expand and, Lord willing, find my way off this blasted place. Settlements have begun to appear all over the island. I'm glad of the community. The fact that we are not alone, but together, will go a long ways to our mutual survival and eventual escape from this unforgiving place. Gifts from other realmers have already begun to appear on the shoreline, but something else has appeared. Proof that we truly are not alone. A giant monolith now sits offshore, vibrating, pulsing. I can feel its power from here, calling all creatures to itself. What does it mean? What is its message? That's the question. And this is the Inner Realms. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Matt Damon, and these are my two potatoes. Okay, I'm, I'm not Matt, I'm Sean, but Matt called me up and he's like, do the potato joke. And I'm like, but it isn't funny. And he's like, oh, it's totally funny, so do it. And I'm like, why? And he's like, because if you don't, I'm going to go all Jason Bourne on you and kill you with a cookbook. I'm the Martian. So if you enjoy Matt Damon bullying people, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Don't do it for me. Do it for Matt Damon. So here we are at the beginnings of Shepherd Base Alpha. She's not much, but she's a sturdy, sprung structure. Yeah, look at her. I like her. Gives us place for storage. We didn't have much, but I was able to move all my storage in here. It's better than having your storage, you know, just laying out there on the beach. But I was able to move all my storage in here and some of my utility tables in here. She's a little slice of home in this unforgiving terrain. Okay, maybe not totally unforgiving. I mean, I have been able to plant a tree farm to get wood. And a sugar cane farm to get paper. Needed that for trading with the locals. But I've also set up some equipment along with a satellite dish to see if we can pick up any alien signals from this planet. Oh, that reminds me. I need to make something. Let's see here. Uh, where is it? Okay, we need two of these, I think, or maybe one of those and two copper. It's either two copper and one amethyst or two amethyst and one copper. Let's figure it out. There it is. It's two copper and one amethyst. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the spyglass. Oh, oh, ow, ooh, oof, ah. We're not supposed to look at the sun. Look at my pupils, they're gone. And check this out, what is this thing? I mean, is it an alien vessel? Is it a beacon from another planet? And, and what, are the, what do the words mean? Hey, if you have Optifine, you can also do this. Ooh, really close. Really, really close. There you go. Love the spyglass. I see you. I see you in there. Yeah, so uh, I've been messing around in here, and I'm definitely picking up signals from that thing. It almost sounds like a call to arms, but I'll take you over there in a minute to see what's going on. But first, let me show you what's down below my dome. Oh, yeah. It, this is... This is Matt Damon. Jerk. Seriously. I mean, ser seriously, Matt. Seriously, Matt. How many times have you killed me? See this? See this? Look, look, look. Look at here. Uh, 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 killed by... Mobs. See that? See that? See that? Matt Damon killed you six times. Thanks a lot, Matt. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Jerk. But, at least we've got food. Look at all these carrots. I mean, it's interstellar. We got carrots galore being automatically picked and replanted and picked and replanted. Carrots that we can trade for emeralds. In fact, have you, have you seen this little trick? Look at this. I got a, I got a villager over here. I got my, uh, I got my, uh, what is he? He's a weaponsmith. Got my weaponsmith right here. And all I did, all I did, I can't, I can't see it. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for the carrot. You can have it. All I did was I put a fence gate and a hopper, and this guy, 
This guy right here, he runs over and he's like, hey, how you doing, Mr. Weaponsmith? How you doing? It's pretty good. Yeah, you know Matt Damon? I know Matt Damon, right? And he just tosses him. He just, he just tosses it. And so then it all goes down in here. Look at this. I didn't empty this very long ago. And then you know what I do with these? You, you, know, you know what I do with those? I'll show you. I go back over here and I trade them back to this guy. And, and he gives me emeralds. How cool is that? Definitely cooler than Matt Damon. Take that, potato boy. No, don't, don't give me any in your mouth. Here. Here. Yeah? Yeah? Ha. Huh. Save yourself from that, Private Ryan. And we've got villagers. Check this out. This breeder, this breeder is working like a charm. We even got another little guy ready to go. It is working like a charm effect here. I can take you around the front. It is working perfectly. Now, I have to tell you, I I, <clears throat> I should have watched my own tutorial. If you haven't seen the tutorial I have in making this breeder, go over and watch that. But you see those trap doors right over the top of my head? I put them one block off and took the breeder a little while to get started. Listen, do me a favor. Don't tell Matt. But now everything is fine and they are able to pathfind to those beds and oh, look at them. Look at them. They're in love. But now all is well and these guys are trading me all the good stuff. I've got armor, all the armor I could need. Look at this. Unbreaking two on a helmet, blast protection and unbreaking. Uh, what do we get? Oh, we have feather falling two along with protection two and unbreaking one. And you know what happens? Do you know what happens if you take two of those pairs of shoes and you come over here and you go like this and you go like this you know what happens you get not protection two not unbreaking one not feather falling two but protection three and breaking two and feather falling three now that my friend is a pair of boots and look what else we've got this is guys this guy's my paper trade this guy's my silk touch this guy this guy's my fortune three. Now, I know that only looks like a fortune two, but for one emerald in a book, I buy two of them and I combine them together on the anvil. And let me tell you, fortune three is, is absolutely vital after 117. Diamonds? Diamonds, they're just a pain in the bum bum to find anymore. Even at level five or level six, I mean, strip mines just are not cutting it. So, I've resorted to boosting the local economy to get my diamond duds. Here we go. I am all armored up thanks to these guys. But of course, you still you still need your Fortune 3 pickaxe. Why? Because with 117, Mo Yang put mining back into the game. That's right, when you slam this little Fortune 3 guy against any of the ores, you get a whole bunch, even from iron and gold and the new copper block. Mo Yang gave hunting for ores a uh, little goodwill. Yeah, Matt, that, that joke didn't work either. Well, these guys aren't the only traders. All of my fellow Inner Realmers have been trading away with one another. Troj has been helping me out from his iron farm. Keegers has this community farm right here across the bay. Looks like he bought a zoo. And uh, I might have borrowed a couple sheep from him. Just a couple? Cubsy left me this lovely stack of redstone. And I left Cubsy this lovely stack of a man who definitely does not look like Matt Damon. Yep, not Matt Damon. He agrees. And Jurassic doesn't know it yet, but his brewing stand has been ever so helpful in brewing up potions of weakness to cure the villagers down under my dome. You think Matt's mean to me? You should see what he does to the villagers. But I cure them all up and they're happy to trade with me. Consider it a boost to the local economy. So what have I been doing with all the goodies the other guys have been sharing with me? And how have I been paying them back in kind? Okay, let's go take a look at this monolith. I have sailed around this monolith in the oceans 8, 11, 12, 13 times. And I have not found a way to get in here. Well, I didn't until I came over here and I hopped out of my boat and I dove down. Down, 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 down here, I found a way in, and it seems that th that monolith up there is calling creatures from all over Minecraft, 
and it's sending them right down this hole. That's right. This monolith's a mob farm. Thanks to Troj, I was able to get some iron and put in some hoppers to catch all the goodies. And let me tell you, it's getting the goodies. It's getting all the stuff. It's even getting string. This was something that was so important to me in making the, I'm sorry, in finding this monolith uh, was to have a mob farm that actually produces string. And this one indeed does it. There they go. They're starting to come. And mm, I don't have any water, but if you put water right in the back there, let me go get some water. And what was I saying? If you put some water right back there, now you've got an XP farm. I like to stand here slapping their faces and pretending they're all Matt Damon. But that's not all we've got down here. We're also getting slime. Let's see how we're doing in this chest. Okay, we've got almost a stack so far. It turns out this monolith is also right over a slime chunk. So I set up several platforms and all those slime get attracted to, uh, oh, let's call him the talented Mr. Ripley over here and talented Mr. Ripley too down there. I don't, I don't know why he, oh, there he is. I thought he was just being shy. So they're over here just attracting the mobs to this lovely peril below. And if I AFK down here, those slime, well, they just keep on a coming. I have found if I AFK down this tunnel right here, it turns off the mob farm monolith up above and see AFK here for slime. In fact, I was thinking about turning this little cave into a nice, uh, you know, waiting room. Wouldn't that be cool? A little living room area in here with a TV and a music system, you know, just for, just for people to hang out and vibe while they wait for their slimes to be served up. But that's still not all that's down here below the mob farm. Uh, or, um, <clears throat> monolith, the, uh, alien monolith. Because we've also got... A full-on geode. I've been in here knocking out some of the blocks so that these things can grow on every side of the budding amethyst. And we can come down and collect those. But that's not all. In fact, I found three separate geodes all under this monolith. It's it, it's, a, it's a monolith. I, I, definitely, I definitely did not, I didn't put it here. Trust me. I, I, I didn't build it. I didn't build it. So what we need to do now is head back to the base and see if our equipment has picked up any sign of who built the monolith. So all the time that we have been out there at the monolith, our machines in here have been working away. Uh, let's get the settings correct on this. Enter the new data here into the computer and come over here and check yes good one more click should do it the, oh we've got results excellent excellent this is what we've been waiting for so at long last we get to find out who it is that built the monolith looks like it's um um um, yeah, that, um, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's not, that, that's not the data I wanted. No, 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 no. It is such an honor to be part of your day. It's an honor to be here with you, with your friends, your professors, and your parents. But let's be honest, this is an honor I didn't really earn. <laughs> I'm just gonna put that out there, I mean.